Ladies and gentlemen, yes, we are back. Monday flavour. And it seems like it's a little bit of a quiet Monday, to say the least. We don't really have anything happening today, but we got a big week ahead of us. Why is it that we need to pay attention to Bitcoin and the Magnificent Seven? Well, you know who the Magnificent Seven are, and we ain't talking Marvel. We're talking about Amazon, Apple, Nvidia, Tesla, Meta. I'm not even going to go to the rest of it. We got earnings week, and that's going to be something that is going to bring a lot of volatility across the board. And we really need to be focused on setting ourselves up for this volatility because, I mean, Netflix, they didn't do too well. <laughs> they gapped down nearly $40. So it'll be interesting to see if they're going to come back and recover that gap. But if Netflix ain't hitting it as a tech stock in principle, what's it going to be like for Microsoft? What's it going to be like for Amazon, Google? You know, Google relies on advertising. Are people not advertising with Google as much if people aren't spending the money? But with that being said, we've got a lot more data coming out, such as manufacturing index for the euro and the US, not to forget those unemployment claims. But before we continue, what is good, ladies and gentlemen? I'm checking you out all on the on the uh, hold on hold on hold on no 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 it's not mono sound hold on hold on i'm gonna fix that i will fix that wait there man i gotta get this right no it's all fine there ain't no mono sound sound is good okay so are we saying it's going higher well well listen it's, it's let me get with it okay there are a few things we need to consider to, to assume bitcoin's going higher granted bitcoin will climb a little bit higher what I'm going to do today is just break down a little bit of a logic for you, just so we can understand what we're going into this week. And then by the time we've done that, that should bring you to the market close and then we are good to go. All right. Cool. Now, where do we stand? Well, the Israeli tensions overseas pretty much have calmed down, but at any moment they could turn around and say, yep, we're going to do some more damage. That's what the market's got right now. And we've just had a little notification saying that rate cuts ain't happening this year. So money's going to still be expensive. That's going to be a problem for corporate debt. When they start refinancing that, it's going to cost more money to do business. On top of that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be paying close attention to oil because oil is going to be the inflation trigger. We've seen oil pull back a little bit. That's good news. But... In my opinion, with tensions overseas, at any minute, oil could actually sweep to the upside. So we've got to be very careful. And if Bitcoin is following the stock market, then naturally we're going to be assuming that if it's not good for the stock market, it's not good for Bitcoin. Okay? So we're going to be diving into all of that. I'm going to be looking at some articles. We're going to be talking about a stable coin by the name of XRP that apparently has more inflows than Bitcoin. What on earth is going on there? Now, they could be because the adoption of the Ripple technology for cross-border payments may be, but come on, man. More than Bitcoin. Anyway, that's another story. But let me just see, what's going on, chat? Is everyone very well today? Are we good? Just checking you out in the chat. Happy days. All right, then, cool. So let's get with the program, ladies and gentlemen, and let's have a little gander on what's been going on across the board. So here we go. Futures are rising with big tech earnings in focus. Now, just to put things into perspective, earnings this week. So <clears throat> we've got Tesla coming up. Now, earnings for Tesla, it's going to be very important. Why? Because they've, already, they've, they've done it again. They've cut the price of the electric vehicles yet again. Now, investors ain't keen with that because they're not earning the same amount of money. And if we just go into it, just don't worry about Bitcoin for five minutes. This is all going to be relative to Bitcoin. You can see, I mean, Tesla is going down and Tesla's news announcement this week comes into play, I believe, on Thursday. <clears throat> Here we go. No, it's Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? It's actually Tuesday. Forgive me. All the top boys are declaring their earnings at the close of the market. So what you might find throughout the week, the stock market might be trading sideways. We might see a little bit of movement, but it will probably trade sideways for a little while just before the news announcements. And then, hypothetically, if Visa and Tesla miss 
their earnings expectations then that can obviously mean that there's going to be a little bit of a markdown happening across the board now let's just go over to the stock market for five minutes to put things into perspective here we go look at what's going on in the s p go to the higher time frames to put it into perspective so you can see we've look from the all-time high we've taken a little bit of a tumble to the downside now what you've got to remember is this these are weak hands right now the guys that were buying over here all right that were missing out on the move to the upside are now effectively being squeezed out and they're just running to sell their positions they're only selling into the people that are buying okay so this is them trying to bid price down remember the stock market will always continue to move up if you don't believe me just look at the monthly time frame when does the stock market go down it just doesn't look like it does it's just on a progressive move to the upside these instances over here where you see the market collapsing all right so that was covid then you had this thing all the way over here where is it this drop down here which was 2007 2009 2007 2008 subprime mortgage crisis and then we've got this over here with september 2022 and then of course well last year's bear market in principle a couple of years ago sorry and then of course we've got this rally to the upside going into absolute madness all right so with that being said going into the charts right now for the stock market with the news announcements i personally believe that they're going to be marking assets down across the board it will be in my opinion a deep correction which means that they're going to be pricing in the idea that the fed rate cuts if they're not going to be happening this year then investors are simply going to be cutting their losses getting out bidding up which basically means buying stocks on the cheap on the way down because value has been put into the stock market and it was all right here and investors are now trying to get as much value as they can by trying to just take advantage of any mini rallies that happen in the stock market now if the stock market's going down then that only means one thing that means that the narrative is that they're going to be doing the same thing to the Bitcoin ETF. Now, we've come back down into where we are. We filled one gap over here. We've got another couple of gaps inside this area that we need to be paying attention to. And then we've got this final big gap here at $31. So does it mean that it's going to go down? Does that mean Bitcoin is going to go down? Well, let's just look at it like this. Bitcoin is way more volatile than the actual ETF. That only means that Bitcoin can shoot up and down and it probably looked like it's not going anywhere. Okay. Looking at Bitcoin across the board right now, if we just go to the one hour time frame, you can see it's actually trying to climb back up. And this is only because investors are just getting over what happened just before the weekend with Israel. OK, now, like I said to you before, you've got to be careful with what's going on with oil. Now, oil right now is taking a little bit of a tumble to the downside. And that's good news for us. Look at this move up to come down but the problem that I've got with oil is they are bidding oil that means they're going to be buying oil contracts in preparation for the next thing which only means the same thing for Bitcoin look at what's going on on the Bitcoin bid and offer chart now this chart if you are new shows us where people are selling the Bitcoin and where people are buying the Bitcoin and contrary to traditional methods in trading buying Bitcoin is not when it's rising no one buys Bitcoin as it's rising well anyone with a brain and that's been in the game for a long time they will always know that you buy on the bid you're buying below you're buying as it drops you want proof of that it's right here order 4.92 million at 66,598 green positive buy okay bids and in this area here you can see they just picked up a lot of BTC 8.8 .8 million at the 60,000 zone this 60k in my opinion has to be Bitcoin's new 20k if it's going to go anywhere go back into Bitcoin price action just to put it into perspective for you Bitcoin is up 1.85 percent across the board happy days we've got vectors to the left of the chart that we need to be paying attention to and the vectors I'm talking about all the way over here at the 69,000 zone quickly going into Ethereum we've got quite it's quite tight price action for Ethereum. Nothing much is happening. I mean, if we just go into the calendar itself, we don't have anything to be worried about today. And the one thing that is happening today, which in my opinion needs to be, we need to see more of it, is we need to see Bitcoin and Ethereum move away as aggressively as possible from the psychological ranges. Psychological range would be the price point of 65687 and 65, sorry, 64550 542 this is the first range at the start of the week it takes the first high and the first low of a new crypto trading week this range is important the further they move away from this point today 
the more of an understanding we will have about price being set up for news announcements. What do I mean? Let's hypothetically assume the following. Bitcoin moves up, okay? Then it comes to the news announcements. What news have we got coming out? Well, tomorrow from 10 a.m. East UK time, we've got the European Flash Manufacturing Index. I personally don't pay too much attention to the French PMI. I mainly pay attention to the German. Why? Because it's the biggest economy in the European zone. So you're only naturally going to be paying attention to that. We will pay a bit of attention to the pound, but it's really the euro in the sense of the German um, PMI. And then, of course, you've got the US dollar going in later on in the day. But going through the week, Wednesday, pretty decent day for us. But Thursday, we have unemployment claims and pending home sales. In my opinion, if pending home sales rises, okay, and it shows that people are month on month with the statistics, a change in the number of homes under contract to be sold, but still awaiting the closing transaction, okay, that pretty much tells you that the economy is still doing its thing. That means the economy is prone to inflation. Rate cuts, they're going to be cut and they're not even going to look to cut rates just yet. We only go over to the bonds market to put things into perspective. Just check this out. Two-year yield flirts with that 5%, comes back down. Go to the 10-year, look at that. Despicable, look at how low it is. They're not buying bonds, do you understand that? They're not picking up the bonds. They're only doing one thing and that's going into cash. And that's the dollar dominance. And remember, Bitcoin is purchased with dollars. You're not exchanging Ethereum to buy Bitcoin. That's only in cryptocurrency. But in the bigger picture in Wall Street, they're converting US dollars into Bitcoin. Now, like I've said before, guys, until Wall Street starts adopting Bitcoin as a commodity and they seek it as a haven, when the market goes down, so will Bitcoin. That's usually, that's the usual consensus. Now, what you've got to pay attention to is what's going on in the bids and the offers. This is the bid and offer of Bitcoin over the last eight hours. If we just zoom in ever so slightly, you can see that there is a high concentration of offers coming into play, which means that the guys who have been bidding Bitcoin to the downside are are looking to sell their Bitcoin. And I've said this, make sure that when you are trading, always keep an eye out on the behavior of how fast price drops to how fast it comes back up. What do I mean? Put it like this. Bitcoin is dropping, the bids are coming into play. So this means that they are buying Bitcoin as it drops. Then all of a sudden you see Bitcoin aggressively reverse back up. I don't like that aggressive move. Why? Because it tells me it's a short term play. If they are looking to sell Bitcoin sooner rather than later, then that eliminates the idea of me thinking that the guys who are bidding are in an accumulation phase. OK, so imagine it like this. Where in the chart can we see them accumulating Bitcoin for quite some period of time? Now, look, I'm looking at it from a day trader's perspective, OK? But the same thing can be applied for when you are looking at it from a daily time frame or a holder's perspective, all right? Just look, every time they drop, they consolidate ever so slightly to pull it back down again, and then they aggressively come back up. And then we do the same here. They drop down, it comes back up, drop down, comes back up. That behavior is not consistent, in my opinion, with a with bids or buyers that want to hold on to Bitcoin, okay? Remember, when we talk about Bitcoin from bids and offers perspective, it's also representing the futures markets. And the futures markets will always have more volume than what the spot volume is. That's a problem. We need spot volume to be more than futures, but futures uses leverage. So naturally, it's always going to be more money because that's where we get involved with Mr. Market Maker. Capish? Are we good with that so far? What chart is he checking to look at all of these? Um, how many people are new passing through to today? Sound like a lot of Raki. Mike, you're super high. Let me just adjust that for you. Is the mic all good there? Happy days. Start of the false move. Yep. No worries. OK, Bitcoin is starting to look like XRP. Well, this is what I'm talking about with Bitcoin and XRP. Apparently, XRP's volume um, bucks the trend with 1.3 million inflows as Bitcoin outflows continue. All right. So in regard to Bitcoin outflows, this is the story right now. Before I get into that, here we go. So I've updated four hours ago. Well, not this article four hours ago. It says that digital asset investment products saw outflows for the second consecutive week, totaling 206 million. 
here is the chart in front of you where you can see what's been going on. Now, am I, all right, this, this is my logic. So the halving has happened, happy days, all right? And Bitcoin looks like it's showing promise to try and climb higher. Go into the daily time frame. You've got this problem, okay? Where although they've broken below the 50 EMA and they've come back down into some of the vector candle recovery over here, they haven't cleared the range just yet, which tells me at some point this area could be another point of interest for Bitcoin, okay? But if you notice, we've got this range. So this is where offers, in terms of high concentration of offers are going to come into play, which will be here, and a high concentration of bids are going to come into here. So they can bounce Bitcoin up and down for as long as they want and not really gain ground, okay? They're still making money, all right? You think the guys that bought Bitcoin down here in this range at 61 haven't sold it as it's gone all the way to 72? Remember, these big cats that are buying and selling the Bitcoin, for example, we've had, here we go, just to put it into perspective for you so you can understand what I mean about when Bitcoin goes up, when it goes down, just look at this. So we've had some bids down here. Wait, here we go. So at 64,839, there was a bid for 5.47 million, okay? That's 64,839. Price right now, according to this, is 66,023. Cool. So at nearly a two grand move in Bitcoin when you're holding nearly 5.15 million Bitcoin, okay? As in monetary value. Bro, you're not thinking they're making any money off that? Of course they are. Go into smaller time frames. Let's just go and do the math from that. 64K. Let's just get some statistics tax coming into play. Here we go. So 64,800. This is where the guy assumed that he made a purchase. Bitcoin makes and clears a little move of around 2% from that point. Okay? Happy days. He's making 2% on his purchase of 5.15 million Bitcoin. He's laughing. He really is laughing. And that's what's going on with the bids and the ask. That's what's going on with this chart right here. It's showing me that right now there is an offering. That means they're selling the Bitcoin as it's moving up. Look at this concentration of Bitcoin here. You see this area? This is 68,288. This area is showing me that there are a lot of offers that are waiting to get their Bitcoin sold. Bitcoin does not get sold as it drops. The only people that are selling the Bitcoin as it drops are the weak hands are the guys that are buying Bitcoin on a whim and they're just thinking, oh my God, it's the halving. Yeah, baby, buy Bitcoin. Naturally, you'd assume, yeah, okay, buy your Bitcoin. But when you see these, these flows of bids and then offers coming straight away, that's a problem for me. I would prefer Bitcoin to climb up slower rather than faster, okay? Just going back into the daily time frame. Are we good with this so far, ladies and gentlemen? <clears throat> if Congress passed that frozen money bill, Treasury bonds will fall like flies. The tre Listen, Treasury bonds are already going to fall and they're already going to keep falling because we've already probed that 5%. That's a problem, all right? The one thing that we need to be paying attention to is what's going on this week on Friday, and I will suggest you all pay attention to this on the Friday. It's the Bank of Japan outlook and the press conference and the policy rate. What are they going to do? This is what I mean, the Japanese yen. They better start doing something, man. They really better start doing something because as long as the yen goes down, the dollar keeps moving up. Assets against the US dollar will naturally go down. We need them to start doing something because dollar yen itself, I mean, look, dollar yen right now is trading at 154.7. And if you look historically at when the Bank of Japan intervened, when dollar yen was trading above the 150 mark, it would go to 150, intervention, they pull back aggressively. They go to 151, intervention, pulls it back. 52, pulls it back. We're now at 154, ladies and gentlemen, we still haven't had an intervention just yet. So we're going to see some sharp reversals on the dollar, so we've got to be very careful and prepared for that, okay? But just going back into Bitcoin on the higher timeframes for my holders, what time are we on? Um, Vladimirovich, well, why are you here to listen to the opposite? Get out of here, man. Don't listen to this guy. What a clown. Um, looking at Bitcoin with the daily time frame, you've got now the 5 and 13 EMA submerging. They're coming closer and closer. Now, in my opinion, for short term, 
would be a good spot for holders to accumulate just for short-term volatility. That, in my opinion, because there are two areas that you would likely want to see price get to. And you, you've got to make the commitment. If you're going to buy Bitcoin on spot, OK, and you're going to be seeking short term volatility, make sure you're reacting. That means when you realize a return, take it and then prepare your bag and load up a bit more on the next bout of volatility. In other words, look at what we've got over here with the 5 and 13 EMA. They're compressed. 50 EMA, flat. Is there any volatility right now? No, there's no movement in Bitcoin from the daily time frame. It's just climbing up. Me personally would want to see Bitcoin for a trend higher. Bitcoin needs to break above 67,512. Now holders might want to be looking at this and saying, hold on a second, halving event has come into play. We've also got this week with the earnings announcements of the Magnificent Seven. And for those that don't know, the Magnificent Seven are Apple, Alphabet, Microsoft, Amazon, Meta, Tesla and Nvidia. They're all going to be declaring their earnings and however they are going to perform is going to have an impact on Bitcoin. So that's why you can pretty much determine why Bitcoin's trading sideways, because it's going to be a deciding factor. If those guys aren't making money, no one else is making money. And if banks are already struggling as it is with higher interest rates and they're unable to offset that in terms of selling financial products to their clients, money supply is starting to get tighter and tighter and tighter. That's going to be a problem for people. That means layoffs are going to happen. They still want that 2% inflation. And they're not going to achieve it when there's more people in work, less people claiming benefit. And if oil's going to keep on climbing with tensions overseas, as and when they announce them, you've got yourself a little bit of a pickle. They even said they're going to force a recession. They will try and force a recession even just to get that 2% inflation target. And that's what gets my brain. If they hit the 2% inflation, what happens then? How aggressive would the cuts be from then? Which they could be pretty aggressive. They didn't hesitate to increase it 10 times. So that's something that we need to take into consideration. When do you start? If you want, to, okay, so what if you want to buy as much possible long term hold? When do you start DCA? All right, in my opinion, you start DCA when Bitcoin is at moving averages, in my opinion. Okay, look, this is where we are right here. If the logic is Bitcoin is going to continue higher, let's just go with a bias and say it's going to climb higher. All right. Look at this. You've got consolidation on the moving averages. Logic would say, I mean, when you see this here, if you manage to see a red vector candle at the highs and that hasn't been recovered, in my opinion, you want to load up as much Bitcoin as possible. In my opinion. Because if Bitcoin is trending upwards with ETF principles, with the idea of a Fed cut later on, then we see red vectors like this and Bitcoin stabilizes and starts to climb then you really want to be getting involved in recoveries like this. Because the logic would say that if you're doing DCA inside of this range right here, spot wise, you want to pick up and sell your Bitcoin as it's climbing up or sell a percentage of it so that the next time you do see another consolidation, you are loading up again with the profit that you've picked up. You've already still got your existing position open, load up on your profit, use your profit, sorry, to load up again on Bitcoin and then ride the move back up again on the assumption that it continues to move up. OK. If you're going to be loading up DCA long term, remember the DCA method that we call the 20, 20, the 20, 40 method. OK, the 20, 20, 20, 40 method implies that you are only committing 60 percent of the capital that you want to use to buy Bitcoin in increments of 20 percent. So you could say that if I want to load up Bitcoin right now, I'd say 20 percent goes here. OK. Now, if you remember, not so long ago, we ran a live where we were talking about this area right here is the area for Bitcoin to go and DCA from with the 20% principle. So those guys in that 20% that use that 20% of the capital are still in that same range. Logic is we want to see Bitcoin try and break away from this point. Then this area could be an area that you load up another 20%. Even though it's still in the same zone, it's looking like it's showing promise to hold this point. But as I said to you, if the bids and the offers are showing short term behavior, that means they are bidding Bitcoin lower and instantly coming back up to offer it out. Tells me that the guys who are playing Bitcoin are in it for short term gains. We already know they're in it for short term gains because the relationship of money overall is already showing short term. Look at your yields. 
nearly 4.9, nearly 5% on the two year. That already tells you that they favor locking up money for shorter periods of time as opposed to longer periods of time. How are you earning more money on a two year than you would on a 10 year? It doesn't make sense, does it? No. Okay. All right, we've got to keep an eye out on that. All right, then. So that's what I'm saying to you. Use th this is an area here, in my opinion, which will be good for DCA to load up with the prospect of, in my opinion, spot behavior. So you're going to treat it as a spot purchase to see short-term gains once you realize those gains. And if Bitcoin is to shoot from this point and completely move in your favor in a short period of time, then okay. Don't, don't get rid of your position, but make sure you're locking some profit, all right? But if it starts to mark up from here and you're starting to see Bitcoin slowing down, I mean, I would use the 50 EMA cloud as a measure to say, okay, maybe at 67,430, if Bitcoin's starting to struggle inside this range, then I might consider taking some profit off the table. Or I'll give Bitcoin a little bit of time to try and get above this point, maybe hit the 70,000, and then I'll start working on a different approach from that point. The idea is, is to try and accumulate as much Bitcoin as possible. Yeah? Okay, cool. So that's, that's for those guys. But what about the spot traders, the guys who do, who do favor Bitcoin in the long run, but will always be buying it and selling it to accumulate money at the end of the day? Because quite frankly, if you're just about buying Bitcoin, you ain't anywhere else other than Coinbase. You're just there buying it. You're not here on YouTube. You're not going anywhere else. You don't even care what anyone says about Bitcoin. All you care about is... How easily can I buy it? And how much of it can I buy? I don't care about the price. All I care about is just being able to buy it. Even if I buy $10 a month, even if I buy $10,000 a month, I just want to buy it. Those kind of people, I mean, in my opinion, they, they have no reason to look at Bitcoin's price other than get themselves a little widget on their phone that says, Bitcoin's price today is $69,000. Bitcoin's price today is $72,000. And every time they look at it, think, mm, you know what? I took the dog out for a walk today. The missus is miserable. I'm going to go and buy myself some Bitcoin. Bang. He buys a Bitcoin. No charts. No nothing. That's where, and that's what I'm trying to cater for. I'm trying to cater for the person that is Mr. Spot Trader, DCA guy, and the day traders, per se. All right? Um... <laughs> Good old oil, you know I'm watching it fam. Okay, if you're watching oil, hold on a sec. By the way, I just wanted to address something here, okay? <clears throat> um, where is it? Someone asked me this question about, oh, I've forgotten what it was. What about Nvidia buy or sell? Listen, listen, when it comes to the news announcements for this week, guys, okay? <sighs> just look at, the, look at these values, look at these returns. Just look at these returns on the chart. If you held Microsoft stock for 10 years, you would have got 904% return, Amazon 635% return, Nvidia 12,480% return, 545% return on Meta, 842 on Apple, Alphabet 392 and Tesla 2,290. I'm gonna tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, if any of the Magnificent Seven miss, but we kind of know that potentially Tesla could actually have a little bit of a problem, all right? But you really all want to be paying attention to NVIDIA straight up. You'll want to be paying attention. It's already gapped up, and we've got a gap down here that they're going to want to fill, but they're leaving vectors behind. You just really want to be paying attention to NVIDIA because if NVIDIA moves up, Bitcoin will be moving up, in my opinion. NVIDIA is a huge market cap just shy of around $3 trillion. It lost $210 billion on Friday. What a joke. That's what I mean about NVIDIA. It's a big market cap that can move markets. Could this be an accumulation phase? Could the bids be coming into play on NVIDIA with the prospect of it getting ready to start marking back up? Go and have a look at all the other assets across the board because, frankly, whatever happens with the Magnificent Seven is going to be reflected on Bitcoin. That's my opinion, okay? Because... There's not enough money in crypto to move Bitcoin to the all-time high. It was all done on ETFs. Simple as. And if anyone wants to beg, beg to differ with that, well, the old whales, well, where are they? They're, they've sold their Bitcoin, in my opinion. They've sold their Bitcoin. Now the new whales of Wall Street are stepping in. And they're going to be playing it the Wall Street way. Okay. 
our Magnificent Seven, our Magnificent Never Miss. Yeah, you know, I hope they don't. What else have we got? Any other questions? How can they move up when money flow has been squeezed? Because these are orders. This, okay. Don't, don't take traditional retail trading logic, okay? Uh, I, I, if I'm getting this correctly, okay? If I've got you correctly, when you're saying money flow, EXO, are you talking about money flow in terms of the US government, the money supply, or are you talking money flow from the perspective of an indicator that says money flow has been squeezed? Just type... Just let me know which one you think it is, and then we'll work on that, okay? But um, just to put it into perspective, what time are we on? Okay, 30 minutes. Just want to know if that's the case. Hold on, FUD expert says, thanks for the info. I have others cryptos for profits. I just want to get at least 0.5 Bitcoin to 1 Bitcoin this year. That's why I'm saking. Sacking. Stacking. That has to be it. It's for long-term hold. Listen, Bitcoin inevitably will continue to rise. It's fundamentally, by the principle of supply and demand, there's only 21 million coins. They can't delete any, they can't create any more. It's all just 21 million. Now, all you've got to have the patient for, patience for is how much of that Bitcoin is being circulated and where is it being accumulated more of? Is it going over here? Is it going over there? But then I had a conversation with Mike, which does make sense. Why should the value of Bitcoin change if it goes from a wallet to an exchange back into a wallet? It, it's one of those tricky ones. So what moves Bitcoin's price? Leverage. Futures markets influence Bitcoin's price. And it's a big measure. It's a big thing that futures markets in principle dictate Bitcoin's price. Why? Because if people are favoring Bitcoin to go higher, then naturally contracts are coming in, price is rising, and the market maker will facilitate those orders, thus leading Bitcoin to mark up higher, okay? Then you've got the Bitcoin that's being used on a day-to-day -day basis. You've got the Bitcoin that's being picked up for the ETF. It's still the same bloody Bitcoin. Oh, it's there. Am I enjoying my trip? Um, I've not really left the house, ladies and gentlemen. That's the truth. I haven't left the house at all. I haven't been to no beach. Forget that, it's too cold. Money flow is only tight because you're not wearing glasses, bro, come on. When is Nvidia earning? So we've got Tesla earning on Tuesday, okay? Wednesday, we have Meta and we've got IBM. Thursday, we have Microsoft Alphabet, okay? And Friday, we have, we don't have anyone on Friday, I believe Monday, going into, wait a second, Tuesday. Where am I? What, what day are we on today? I'm losing my bearings. What day are we on? Today's, geez, I've got my dates wrong. So, Tuesday is Tesla, Wednesday's Meta, Thursday's Microsoft Google, Friday is, when's Nvidia declaring its earnings? Monday, Tuesday. Amazon is on Tuesday, the 30th of April. Okay. First of May, second of May, Friday. Ah, oh, Berkshire and Hathaway are declaring their earnings. I think Nvidia is not going to be until I'm not seeing it. I don't even know when it is. I've got it on the market swap. That's going to be for another video. I know Nvidia are declaring their earnings. Hold on a second. It should be. Uh, oh, this is wild. Here we go. It's insane. Market watch. Here we go. <clears throat> no, not this. I'll find out for you guys later, man. I'll find out. I'll find out for you. Is futures really just betting on paper where price will go or is there a spot buy order behind futures buy order equal to the leverage trade? You are literally betting the future. I believe Bitcoin's going to go up. Here's my lump of contracts with my leverage. Please put me in for this. You're trading spreads in principle. 
You believe that Bitcoin's price is going to go higher. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Buy up, buy up, buy up. I believe the future price of Bitcoin is going to be 75,000. Okay, and I see it's going to happen in, let's say, May. So I'm going to buy May futures contracts and I'm going to be loading up. I believe future price point of Bitcoin is going to be 75,000 in May. Cool. So I start loading up my futures. All right. And it's leverage. That's all it is. Spot is just you're just going in on Bitcoin, no leverage whatsoever. And you are just waiting to see if price is going to be changing in terms of the spread as well. But with futures, you're using leverage. And depending on what kind of futures you're using as well, you've got contracts for difference, but you've also got the CME futures. To put it into perspective, there's different types. There's only one futures, it's CME futures per se. But then you've got Bitcoin perpetual futures, which is principally contracts for difference. You're trading the spreads, okay? 22nd of May, NVIDIA, sorry, thank you for that, okay? Please talk about the elephant in the room. What's the elephant in the room? What's the elephant in the room? Am I streaming from Japan? No. What about XRP? Is that, is that the elephant in the room? This is a clown. But if you look at it, it's... There could be some potential spot opportunities here with XRP, depending on the news announcements, you know? You know, Tino, you know the effect of Tesla on Tesla tanking on this market week, please. Look, Tesla, Tesla dropping is not. If Tesla keeps this drop consistent, if it keeps on going, all right, you got full vector candle recovery right here. In my opinion, if Tesla breaks the hundred dollar mark, that's going to be where some big buying is going to be happening. In my opinion, because that'll be that'll be a good discount. And you can see the initial reaction from that, okay? Imagine, bids. Tesla bids get triggered, and they offered them out. It's exactly the same story with Bitcoin. Yes, there you go. There you go, that's, that's the best way. Bent Fraction puts it in an analogy like that. Tina, what about commercial real estate if no rate cuts? Well, what you've got, well, commercial real estate. Okay, so if they're not cutting the interest rates, then that means people are going to have to end up paying longer which is naturally going to end up leading to foreclosures. People are going to end up losing their homes, which is, to be frank with you all, this is exactly what the Federal... It sounds sad, but it's true, okay? The Federal Reserve does want people to lose their jobs. The Federal Reserve does want to crash the market because there's too much value locked into the stock market, like way too much value, all right? And the only way that you can reset markets is if you make it difficult for them to transact on a day-to-day. -day. And that means keeping interest rates high, all right? They keep the interest rates high and they even consider increasing them again. Who's gonna be picking up mortgages? Because there's only gonna be so many companies that are gonna keep employing people when interest rates are high. Right now, companies are able to absorb it. There's demand for people, there's demand for work, people want to work and people are getting the work. Unemployment claims are at their lowest. The unemployment rate is at its lowest in 50 years in the United States. Every time they project it to go up, it comes down each time. All right. But when you're looking at it from commercial real estate perspective, it all depends on how many of those properties have been purchased on finance. They're going to have to restructure that finance again at the new rate. And that's going to hurt them. So they're going to have to start moving balances, start moving assets, start getting rid of assets, start offsetting, you know, laying off people. It all depends on what you mean by commercial real estate. Is it just for a company that owns a portfolio of properties or are we talking banks that hold commercial properties and the money that they use to borrow to buy those properties? It's, there's, there's, it's just to summarize it. It just means that if interest rates are higher and there is a prospect of it going higher, People start getting laid off. Then foreclosure is going to come into play. You've got yourself subprime mortgage crisis 2024, basically, in a nutshell. Why are you winding me up? You playing Metallica while doing a stream or am I hearing sounds? You're hearing sounds, but the fact that you're listening to Metallica in the background, congratulations. You've won my vote, bro. Okay. Um, yeah, man. We're, we're <laughs> um... Gold, gold, he you know, enough crypto talk. Oh, forgive me, gold. Well, gold's going down, but it's not going down enough. 
Your gold, listen, gold oil, right, gold, oil, and the bonds. These are the three asset classes you really want to be paying attention to because it's going to be telling you if retail is seeking safety in terms of a safe haven. Bonds is going to tell you if investors are going to be looking at low risk investments or they're just simply getting rid of junk bonds because that's the term, junk bonds, to move it all into cash. All right. And geopolitical tensions are going to be triggering volatility in all three of these asset classes. Gold goes up, safe haven. Oil goes up, safe haven. Bonds go down, problem. Cash goes up. OK. The problem is equity hedge investors, when gold goes up, they're selling into you. So this move to the downside in gold could effectively be a markdown phase in preparation for gold to go back up. Could they be revealing to us that there's more news that is going to come out that could impact the markets, which will naturally lead gold to mark higher? Because you can imagine a bag load of short investors or short traders are coming in here and holding price, or should, or should I say, believing that gold is going to go down again. What, well, you think that everything's all good now in Israel? Nah, man. Not in my opinion. Not at all. And you've got to be mindful of oil at the same time as well. Okay. Okay. Why do you guys want me to walk on the beach for? Guys, I ain't going to no beach. Nah, I'm not going nowhere. Bonds going down next month after Bank of Japan intervenes. Well, the logic is, okay, if, if the, this, this is what we've got to be careful of as well, all right? This is where you're going to understand exactly where you are. Bear with me a second, ladies and gentlemen. Not the time for that call. Um, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm not depressed. I'm not depressed, guys. I'm good. Listen, look, this is a safe haven. This thing right here, Japanese yen, is a safe haven. When this goes up, okay, dollar goes down, Bitcoin goes up. And what I, why I make, and let me just bring it to you like this, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> why I talk about the yen, why I talk about the bonds, why I talk about the stock market, why I talk about the yields, why I talk about gold, and why I talk about oil, all in relation to Bitcoin. These have got way bigger market caps, way bigger market caps. So if those are going up, Naturally, Bitcoin with its convenience store market cap, okay, is naturally going to be following suit. If I'm going to give you anything or leave you with anything, it's follow what these asset classes are doing. We know the Japanese yen is going to do something. It's going to shoot up very soon, okay? That could be a flight for safety, it's the Bank of Japan intervening, which is naturally going to put pressure on the dollar itself, but that will be very short term. They'll be only able to keep it high for such a long, for a certain period of time, okay? You focus on the bonds. If people, if investors are not picking up the government bond, okay, at a low risk, what are they doing? They're either seeking higher risk elsewhere or they're going into cash, which is dollar, okay? If investors are going into gold because they're concerned, then gold is naturally going to keep on climbing. And if you're looking at oil and you're seeing oil's prices rising, well, that's commodity traders buying up all safe havens during times of uncertainty. In my opinion, they're going to be pricing in the fact that the rates are not going to be cut. That's naturally going to lead to corrections. We get these news announcements with these big Magnificent Seven. They do well. We'll see short-term volatility to the upside. That's why I focus on the bids and ask for Bitcoin, because if Bitcoin comes down for short term and then you see it go back up again, you're being thrown about emotionally on whether Bitcoin's going to go up or down. So take advantage of it. You buy up Bitcoin as it's dropping. Any bout of volatility to the upside and it recovers completely the whole move to the downside, take a profit, pull out, restart, because Bitcoin hasn't broken neither the all time high, neither has it broken below the 60K zone. So we're stuck in a flat line range. Bitcoin is boring. You get more excitement trading XRP, and that says a lot. All right. Focus on those other assets, ladies and gentlemen. No one else in crypto will be focusing on those assets because we've all been focused on Bitcoin, just crypto and focusing on things that are happening in crypto. But you've got an ETF. 
And the money that goes into the ETF is because BlackRock and all the big boys are going and picking up the Bitcoin and taking it away from you all and storing it into their own little deposit box. All right. If you are new to this channel, this is not the normal scene. Mad love and respect. And I'll be checking in with you guys later on. Take care of yourselves, gang. Peace.